Hey, welcome to Gourmet Fishing, where we catch fish and then, well, we do cook our catch. But on today's show, we're not going to be cooking any catch and we're not going to be catching anything to cook. Hi, I'm your host, David Murray. What we are going to do is we're going to date the video just a tad. It's an early November. We got Thanksgiving right around the corner. So what a better time than to do a gourmet fishing Thanksgiving dinner. That's right. We're going to have turkey dressing. We're going to have mashed potatoes. We're going to have that with some good gravy, some macaroni and cheese, green bean casserole. And we're going to round that out with a pecan pie and a nutmeg infused whipped cream. And we're also going to start everything off with an adult beverage so we can get through everything we need to get through. So I tell you what, don't go too far away. When we come back from the opening, we uh instead of the adult beverage we're going to start with our our turkey that's the thing that's going to take about two and a half to three hours to cook so again don't go too far away we'll be right back Hey, welcome back. Take a look at here. We've got a little 10 pound turkey that's going to be just perfect for a small little crowd. We also have some salt, some pepper. Um, I've got a sweet onion, some carrots, celery, and I've got some uh, chicken broth. So that's kind of how we're going to start out with our Thanksgiving dinner and our turkey. Now, after you open up your turkey, you're probably going to have one of these little uh, thermometer doojiggies. I usually take mine out. I just don't I just don't cook with them um, you know I've got my my standard meat thermometers that I'll be using throughout and another thing we've got is this little plastic device in here uh, I guess that holds the legs together I usually take that out too that's usually one of the first things that comes out I think it does there it is right there boom that thing right there I don't know ain't gonna worry about it but I tell you what they're uh, usually your turkeys inside the cavities there are other little pieces that you probably want to take out inside this one we have the turkey neck I'm gonna put that in my pan because that's got some good flavor and that's gonna help us out with our gravy coming up and then it the uh, neck area we've got all the giblets this is the heart the uh, what is in there the liver the gizzard stuff like that but we're also <laughs> gonna be using that too. I tell you what, we're going to go ahead and just open that up and dump that in there just like that. Just like so. Now, what do we need to do? Well, first thing we need to do, we're going to pull our turkey up and we are going to salt and pepper inside the cavity. Because if we just salt on the outside and season outside, there's nothing in the inside being seasoned. So that's what we're we're going to do is we're going to take care of the flavor inside. So there we go. Just like so. Now, here we go. I'm going to come in with one small carrot. Come in and just kind of rough cut this carrot. Just like so. Throw that in the cavity too. Just like that. Just like that. And then I'm going to come in here with one of my celery sticks. Again, rough cut. And it goes just like so. Now our onion, do the same thing. I'll try not to cut myself, just like that. Cut this into quarters. Cut the ends off. Take this out, just like so, take the skin off. Cut it one more time. And I'm gonna put just a quarter of an onion inside our turkey. Yes, okay. Voila, we're close to being done with our bird. It's not, not too tough. Although, we do need to do something. What we're going to do, after we get all the uh, inside the cavity seasoned up and our vegetables in there, we're going to come in and we're going to separate the skin on the breast 
from the meat and you'll find out why I'm going to do that in a second. So all you do is you come through, just use your finger and kind of just separate that skin because uh, we're trying to make a cavity for us to put some butter in and that's going to keep this breast nice and moist. All right, now we've got our our skin separated from our meat. Be careful not to tear the skin because what we're trying to do is to keep this butter uh, kind of sealed uh, uh, in between the skin and the uh, meat. So again, when, when we're cooking, that butter's gonna keep that, uh, that breast meat nice and, um, and moist. Now what I've done is taken a stick of butter and I've cut it long ways. I've quartered it up. So now I'm gonna come in, I'm gonna push this just like that. Come in this side and we're gonna do one more, just like so. Quick and easy, and now I'm gonna also take one of my butter, butter quarters and stick it in the cavity, and then I'm gonna take this one and drop it right there in the pan. So, now we are very, very close to putting the sucker in the, uh, in the oven. So now let's come in here and get us some salt on the outside, come back, some pepper. Man, that's all I use, salt and pepper. That's, you know, they're almost just, it's kind of hard to, to go wrong with that, isn't it? So just salt and pepper, get the inside, bam, there it is, okay. Now, if you want, you can take your wings and fold them up underneath the bird. I kind of like to have everything out because when this thing, uh, I, there's something about like little, like little um, turkey chips, the ends of the, uh, the wings when when it's all cooked and done and they're all nice and brown you can anyway that's that's just me that's just something i like so <laughs> anyway so let's get our um our other two we got two more carrots and we've got a couple more um celery stalks again i'm going to cut these rough cut uh our carrots leaving the skin on doesn't matter we can toss it in there go away mr fly don't need any help you come over there and again just just a quick rough cut be careful when you rough cut these things don't want you to get cut and have to go to ah go see a doctor on thanksgiving do we no definitely not again rough cut like so toss this in here come in here here's our uh other half of our uh onion that we've got pull this skin off i'm just gonna grab that la last layer I'm going to come in and just cut that like so. Put that just like that. We're going to come in now like this. Check out our little our little uh, pot of, of goodies that's going to have one heck of a gravy when we're done with this thing. I'm going to come in and I'm going to add just a little bit of chicken broth. It's going to keep things moist, so when it's cooking, uh, it's going to kind of sort of boil up and, and, uh, and actually uh, trap some of the moisture in with our bird. Now, this pan should be just a tad bigger, but it's not, so we're going to deal with it the best way we can. We're going to drop our turkey in here just like that. Oh, yeah. Let you move over here. Okay. Yes. So... Now what we've got is our turkey is sitting on top of all of our little goodies that we have in, in our pan, our, our carrots, our onions, our celery, um, the giblets, and the turkey neck. So I'm going to come and grab us some tin foil, if you're, if you're old enough to remember it being called tin foil, or aluminum foil, just like so. And now we are going to cover our bird. Sorry for the noise, it's probably a little crinkly. Now, what, um, on the packages that you get with your turkey, it's gonna have the cooking instructions, like the temperature and all. This is, a, like I said, about a 10 pound bird. And we will cook this at 325. We're gonna bake it for about two and a half hours to three hours. But what I'm gonna do, every 30 minutes as we go along cooking, I'm uh, gonna take a bottle of white wine I, I like to use the riesling i like a little bit of the sweetness in my gravy um, again use whatever white wine you like it could be chardonnay uh, pinot grigio whatever 
whatever you want to use, use that. But I'll use a bottle of that and, and two sticks of butter. I'll melt that and then get a, some cheesecloth and I'll cover the top of our bird. Well, I'll show you how to do that here when, when we're coming up at our first little 30 minute um, basting uh, segment. So now cover that with cheesecloth. Nice, kind of a nice little three or four layers of that. And then as we add our, um, our basting liquid, it'll kind of get in that um, uh, cheesecloth and keep everything nice and moist. So we are now off to the oven. <laughs> All right, we've got our turkey in the oven. Now it's time to take a little bit of a, a deep breath, kind of relax, and let's go ahead and get ourselves a mimosa uh, underway. Not, in, not just a regular mimosa, this is the Abaco Bar and Grill mimosa. It's kind of our little greenish, uh, Mimosa. You used to think of them, uh, uh, you know, orange. Nah, no, not here. Heck no. So we're gonna take, <laughs> we're gonna take a little bit of sparkling wine, just like so. Might be going. Good Lord, man, you filling that thing all the way? Up? Eh, it'll go down. So it's like that. That's about half that. That'll work. Now I'm gonna come in with this little uh, bottle of uh, blue elixir, okay? And I'm gonna come in and just give it a little. A little shot, just like that. All it is is blue curacao. Yeah, don't worry about it. nothing. Nothing magical, you know. We don't have any unicorns doing things. But anyway, all right. Now, instead of um, uh, orange juice, we're using pineapple juice. Some, again, something a little different. Come in. We're just going to give it a little, top it off, just like that, and check it out. Man, how about that? Something a little different, isn't it? Yeah. Different, 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 and the flavor is is very different. Kind of reminds you, reminds me of uh, like my my grandma or great aunt's uh, punch that we'd have, you know, around Christmas time at parties and all. So, but no, really, give it a shot. Very simple, very easy. Something just a little different. Ah, yes, ah, not bad at all. So I tell you what, it's time to uh, move to our uh, one of our courses, and that is. Um, stuffing or dressing i'm not sure you know i guess the stuffing is when you actually stuff it in the bird as you notice that we didn't put any of the cornbread no so i guess we'll we'll call it uh dressing so we're going to get that underway right now ah almost all right it's time to get our dressing underway not stuffing because it's not going in the bird anyway <laughs> one of those things so what we've got we're going to have some salt and pepper we've got an onion a couple of stalks of celery we've got cream of chicken soup and cream of celery soup along with some chicken broth and our herb um, seasoned um, what do they call it classic stuffing so we've got we have browned a little bit of butter on our pan we've got three tablespoons in there and now I'm gonna come in with my grater and we're gonna grate our onion just like so helps everything kind of break up as it cooks itself down in there oh yeah and we've got a small sweet onion. That's all we're using. Just like so. There you go. That's fine. Now we're going to come in, grab ourselves. Well, I think we're going to do that. Our two <laughs> celery stalks and do the same thing. Just like that. Because all that stuff's going to break down and uh and and just kind of sort of disappear in our dressing just like that all right we are just about done grating our celery you know what i think that's going to be good now i'm going to take a little bit of that and i'm just going to drop it right in there that's all we need that's that's going to be perfecto yes it is now i'm going to come in here with a spoon and we're going to saute our grated uh make sure this is on yes there it is is it? Yeah, okay. <laughs> Never know sometimes. Now we are going to, uh, again, saute our onions and our celery in our brown butter. And wow, what a, what a smell we've got there. Now I'm going to come in and I'm going to add just a little bit of pepper and a little bit of salt. Just like that. That's all we need. Just like so. Voila. Okay, now we're going to come in and open our two cans of soup. This is the cream of chicken. And this is what's gonna kick this stuff up a little bit. Definitely. 
Oh, there it is. All right. That's lovely looking. But it's gonna be good. I promise. I promise. I promise. So, like so there's our our cream of celery. Just like that. Yes. 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 Now I'm gonna come in with our um, chicken stock, and I'm gonna add about a can of about a can and a half, I guess you could say, of our chick. Well, you know, about a can and a quarter. That's all we need. We don't need to recondense our soup like we're gonna eat it. So now we're gonna come in with our whisk and we're gonna combine everything together and bring it back up to a boil. There we go. Just like so. And this is gonna be the base for our dressing. And I promise you, it's gonna, you're gonna go, wow, I would never thought of that. Well, one of those things you just kind of sort of stumble upon and it uh, actually works out for the best. So, just like that. Okay. So, I mean, that's, that's it. That's pretty daggone simple when you, when, when you, when you, when you think about it. Um, so, we're gonna come in with a bag. What is this? Uh, what have we got here? A 12 ounce bag. And I've got another bag just in case I might need to add a little bit more. You know, because you don't want it to be too, um, uh, too loose. So, just like so. Okay, take, put you here, or tire you. I'm gonna come in with my, my full bag, just like so. And also, just in case it's too thick, we've got a little bit more chicken stock. Where is the spoon? Here it is. All right. Now, there she goes. She's going to come together. That uh, handle's a little warm. <laughs> so, just like that. Yes, sir. It's going to come together. Yes, it is. Definitely. But, I mean, look at that. Voila. I mean, boom. We've got dressing ready for some gravy that'll be coming up here real soon. All right, time to transfer our dressing into the serving pan. Yes, sir. -ree. So, let's see if that actually gets in there correctly. So, we'll find out here in a sec. So, here we go. Come in. You know what? I'm just going to. Do it this way. Grab in. You know, it's amazing that a spat hook can be used for all kind of different things. Just like that. Voila. Yep, this is going to go. Just like that. Man, I tell you what, I am getting hungry thinking about this. So, you know, we're going we're gonna to get all this in our, in our serving pan. And uh, we're going to put this kind of on the back. Uh, probably stick it in one of my other ovens on lukewarm but we will uh right before we serve everything up we'll heat this thing up get it back up to temperature you know, this is kind of sort of like a true thanksgiving uh dinner where we are we're, we're, and it is so we are, we're kind of sort of putting everything together creating little 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 individual courses as we go as the turkey is cooking and i tell you what that's going to be our next little project is to bring that turkey out get our basting liquid of white wine and butter and our cheesecloth on top ah, we're gonna rebaste it put it back in the oven yes oh yeah mm. Mm -mm. oh man check it out we've got our turkey out uh this has actually been about 45 minutes uh not the 30 minutes so i gave it a little bit longer to to get itself um underway so to say now this is a cheesecloth you can kind of sort of see through it now i cut me a piece that's going to fit right over almost the whole th you know what i'm not going to do that i tell you what i'm going to come in here fold it down because all i'm trying to do is to really keep the uh the chicken breast night i'm chicken listen to me <laughs> our turkey breast nice and uh and moist so let's see here i think we're going to probably come in here Right there, that looks good to me. I think we'll go with that. Now over here, I've got um, about a half a bottle of, of wine and a stick and a half of butter. And that's gonna be our basting uh, uh, liquid. So we're gonna come in, 
that's almost almost melted that's fine and we're just going to come in and we're going to soak our cheese cloth just like so oh man yes sir just like so all those flavors from this wine oh man they're gonna get in into our bird and also into our gravy that's what i'm looking forward to so here we go get this thing all nice and covered just like that oh yeah yes yeah, once you get right there there you go uh-huh all right here we go we've got it just about covered don't need to be a hundred percent covered but tell you what as long as you got that center section taken care of right there oh yes that's exactly what we're after now let's turn that off put you right over here and it's time to cover our bird back up put it back in the oven for another 30 minutes yes all right we are on our second to the last course of our thanksgiving dinner we're working on our mashed potatoes um i've got about three pounds of potatoes I've, 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 I've peeled them and diced them up all about the same size put them in some cold water now i got that water coming up we're going to bring that to a boil and we're gonna simmer it down and uh get them uh for tender and then we're gonna put them in a bowl and off we go with all the other goodies but we are going to need to come in here with about a half a teaspoon of salt. We've got a teaspoon, uh, I'm sorry, that was a half a tablespoon of salt, a tablespoon of pepper, and a tablespoon of garlic powder, the granulated garlic. That's going to get in there and just release some awesome flavors throughout. So now we just have to wait for some thermo thermodynamics to come into play, and this needs to get itself up into a rolling boil and we will then oh, let's see here yeah and then we will reduce that uh boil down to a uh a bubble not a roll and then we'll cook them down till they're fork tender all right you know what we need to do we need to take a look at our green bean casserole and this has to be i'd say one of the easiest of all of our courses that we're doing because what we've got here we've got uh, French style green beans cream of mushroom soup and some little crispy fried onions that's it now, really now we are going to add a little bit of salt like so just like always got to add salt I do I don't know maybe y'all don't and there's some pepper so now we're going to come in and we're just going to combine our cream of mushroom soup with our green beans that's it not hard come on <laughs> just like so we got our Mashed potatoes are, are just about ready to come off the heat. But look at that. That's it. That's what we're after. Look at that. Awesome. 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 And this, I don't know, in our, in our family, this is kind of one of those things that we just have to have. And not everybody likes it. That's why we're going to make just a, a small little batch of this. So, here we go. Into, excuse me, our small serving tray. Just that oh yeah just like so We've got a little bit left over just like that come over here thank you all right now i'm going to spread this around just like so oh yeah oh yeah Oop, made a little mess stay right there now come in with our crispy fried onions top that just like so now we're gonna put this, yeah, how quick was that? Now, all we have to do is put this in the oven at 350 for about 15 minutes. Boom, done, how about that? That is, and it's pretty good, it really is. So, there is, this is actually our second to last course. So, off to the oven we go. Hey, we are ready to begin putting our mashed potatoes together. I've taken them off the stove. I've drained them. And I tell you what, check that out. They just, they are uh, knife or fork tender. They are ready to be mashed. So why don't we get started? This is a, just a good old potato masher. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to come in. I've got a, uh, about a half a stick of butter. I'm going to put it in here because it's still nice and hot. I want the thing to kind of sort of melt just like so. Yes, 
you out of the way, put you here. Now we are going to begin mashing. Yes, this is kind of a little fun part. Take a little bit of frustrations out if you got any, just like so. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. And they actually do smell pretty good. All right, I think, yeah, I think we got it. They, they're, everything looks nice and, and, and smooth as we can get it with our potato masher. Get everything off of here, it's right there. And I tell you what we're gonna do, we're gonna come in with, um, I don't know, let's see what we got. We got three pounds of potatoes. I used a quarter stick of butter. Let's see here. So it's probably going to be about four ounces. See how we go with that. What's nice is we can uh, we can taste and adjust as we go. And then this is uh, some heavy whipping cream. Come in here, probably with I don't know maybe a eighth of a cup, quarter of a cup, something like that. And here we go. Make a little noise. Oh yeah, coming together. Yep, there we go. All right, now, let's see, that's that's pretty good. We do need to have a taste. Let's see what we got, if we have to add anything else to it. Man. Not bad at all, I think. You know what? Nope, I think we're fine. I was going to add some salt, but we can take care of that. Um, afterwards, after we put it on our plate, but no, I think that is, is perfect. Um, yeah, I think it's good. <laughs> we'll leave it just like that. Now, I tell you what, let's put these in another serving container. Yes, spoon. Here we are. And we will go and put these back in the oven. And keep them warm. <clears throat> oh man, look at that. Yes. And we are, these are just asking for some good old gravy. <coughs> Excuse me. Now we are on our last leg, our last course that's coming up. That's gonna be our great macaroni and cheese. All right, we're on our final course of our Thanksgiving dinner. We're going to work on our macaroni and cheese. So we've got three, four kind of cheeses that are going into our mac and cheese. But we're going to start out with a roux. I don't know if you all remember a roux from a while back. That's equal parts of flour and, um, and an oil. And we bring that over, uh, over, over heat. And we're going to create a blonde roux, which is, uh, which is more of a, I guess you could say, it's a little bit more of a white roux. Uh, roux vary from, um, wow, I think we need to add a little bit more oil in there. <laughs> uh, they range from, from a white roux to a very, very dark roux. Uh, and they're used to uh, thicken soups. And uh, of course, we're going to use it to thicken our our cheese sauce for our mac and cheese. So, there we go. Yes, sir. Just like that. Now, like I said, we've got we've got Vermont extra sharp cheese. We've got New York white cheddar cheese and um, and sharp cheddar cheese along with cream cheese. Yes, gotta have that. And then we've got um, cream and um, chicken broth to go along with it, and some sour cream just to make everything happy. So. That, I tell you, is looking pretty good. You can kind of get, you know, you know when, when this uh, white roux, or when this roux is, is starting to come together, we're trying to, well, we're trying to just cook that, um, that, that flour taste out of the flour, <laughs> that makes sense. And you'll get a little bit of a, a nutty aroma when, when that starts getting where it needs to be. And I tell you what, I think we're, looks like we're about there, because we don't want it to get too dark, because then it would do something funny to our mac and cheese. So we're gonna come in and pour in our, um, we've got two cups of, of chicken broth and we've got uh, three quarter cups of heavy, uh, heavy cream. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring this thing up to temperature. We're gonna get it nice and thick. I do have some fresh thyme. I'm going to kind of just squeeze it in my hand kind of bruise it up, get those oils 
to start coming out and that's going to infuse that great thyme flavor into our um into our roux uh mixture here now i'm going to come in right now i'm going to add a little bit of black pepper and i'm going to come in and add some salt just like that now we're going to bring that sucker <coughs> excuse me back up to a boil and when it comes to a boil that's going to be as thick as it gets and then we can move on to our next step and that's incorporating our cream cheese all right our as you can see our um our roux has thickened up well with our um with our cream and our um chicken broth i mean check that out oh that looks great now i'm going to come in and we're going to add four ounces of cream cheese and we're going to melt that down in here we're going to make a uh, almost a four cheese cheese sauce for our unbelievable mac and cheese heck yeah all right as the sun is setting on our thanksgiving dinner we are getting very close now we're going to come in and we're going to add about four ounces of our um, um, white cheddar cheese and four ounces of our sharp cheddar like so yes and then we're going to come in with about four ounces of our vermont cheddar and we're going to melt that down in here heck yeah man you cannot ask for anything much more cheesier than what we got going on right here heck yeah get that thing all nice and melted we've taken our um uh, the stems of our thyme out so now all we have is goodness of cheesiness yes so there we go okay now we are almost ready to put this thing in the oven let me grab my macaroni got some good old elbows we got about 10 ounces and we're gonna break all these in here just like that oh my yes yes we are so now with our whisk get that thing all mixed up just like so oh wow look how creamy that is <laughs> just like that yes okay that's it i can turn the stove off <laughs> yep now jesus that is unbelievable now where is here it's right here here is our this is our little uh it's just an oven proof um uh cooking container we got right here now let's see here take put that there and here we go oh yes and we did grease the uh this container with some of the spray oil look at that oh yes that is yummy come back here mr whisk here we go oh yes and we haven't forgot about the turkey i do believe it is almost done i think i just heard the little oven beep behind me we'll have to check that out in a minute but oh goodness check that out now here is some fresh grated um vermont white cheddar just like this we're coming in here oh unbelievable now we gonna come in with a little bit more of our sharp cheddar just like so you get a good coverage we're going to put this in the oven at 350 for about 10 to 15 minutes till we get us a nice little crust and I'll come back with some new york white sharp just like that how about that how about that we are so close to sitting down and having our thanksgiving dinner yes all right our last step for our thanksgiving dinner is we've got to make a gravy don't we we've got right here we've got just under three cups of oh the great flavor that we created from our turkey in the, in the bottom of our roasting pan i've uh, strained uh, all the liquid off of it then removed some of the oil there's still a little bit on top but that 
Nah, that's not, we're not going to worry about that. So what are we going to do? We're going to, guess what? We're going to make another roux. Yes, we are. We've got uh, three tablespoons of oil, just like we did with, um, with our mac and cheese. And we've got a uh, just under a quarter cup of um, a flour. And we're just using all purpose. And that doesn't really make a difference if you use self-rising or purpose bread. Uh, anyway, so that's what we're going to do. And we're going to create probably one that's a little more, a little darker blonde, I guess you could say, than, than what we did for our um, macaroni and cheese. So here we go. It is starting to come together. All right, we uh, we almost lost our our roux when I was looking for my time. I'm not going to worry about the time right now because we actually put some in here. Now I'm going to come in just like that with our. Oh wow! Check out the goodness that came out of that turkey. Holy cow! That's unbelievable. Right? Oh god, it smells so good. You, smell, you get that little bit of that wine from that that, that sweetness out from that riesling that we use. Got all that butter, all those flavors from our, um, oh, and there's even, I think, yes, there's a little piece of celery in there. But we've got our, the flavors from our celery, our carrots, our onion. Oh, we're going to bring this back up to a boil. And we're going to be ready to plate our Thanksgiving dinner. We are so close to being done. And it's amazing. It started raining. Sun's going down. What the heck, you know? Kind of sort of like it is on, on Thanksgiving. <laughs> yes, so let's get this thing up and rolling. Oh man, check that gravy out. Oh wow, man, I wish y'all could smell it. Ah, need that smell of vision they always talk about. Yes sir, Re, that is ready to go on our dressing and our mashed potatoes. Heck yeah, I cannot wait. So I tell you what, ah, it is, you know what? It's time to plate. It's time to get our spread out so everybody can see it. Oh, that's going to be good. As the day draws to an end, check this thing out we have. We've got our turkey. We've got mashed potatoes. We've got our dressing, our gravy that came from our turkey cookings, our green bean casserole, and our macaroni and cheese. Man, what more can you ask for? Except I did promise a pecan pie, didn't I? So, hey, here it comes. Hey, what a better way to end a great holiday meal than with a slice of pecan pie. That's what we're getting ready to get started on right now. But the first thing we need for a pie is a pie crust. Now, what we can do, which is no problem at all to use, are these pre-made, pre-pressed pie shells and the aluminum pan. That's no problem. I use them quite a bit actually um, always have some around because sometimes during the holiday they you know you can they can sell out of what I really like and that's that uh, pre-made nine inch diameter pie dough and that's what we're gonna use now what I've got here is a nine inch um, oven safe glass um, pie dish and we are going to press our pie dough into our um, pie shell to get ready for our pecan pie. So I'm going to roll this out just like so. We're going to place it just like that. Come on, there we go. And we're just going to come in here and we're just going to kind of work this uh, our pie dough into our pie shell just like so. And this is definitely not rocket science, something that's fairly easy now you can if you want get fancy and do little crimps uh, you know on, on the excess uh, pie dough that kind of spills over the side I usually don't do that I will grab a knife just like so hold on let's get this all set up the way we want it and I'm gonna trim just like that I'm just gonna trim that the excess pie dough off so it's flush with the top of my um, pie pan, just like this. I don't know why I do it this way. It's just, I don't know, something that <laughs> I always do. So there we are. Now we have our prepared pie pan with our pie dough in it. So set this right over here until we need it. 
Now, take a look at our ingredients and you might say, what am I gonna do with this? I don't know, I might just eat that later on. <laughs> Mix it with some confectioner's sugar. <laughs> I don't know, probably not. Anyway, what, what we have for our, um, our pie, our, our pecan pie filling is we've got a third of a cup of butter. We've already got that in our mixer. We've got a half a cup of sugar we're gonna dump in there just like so there it is then we have right here we've got a cup of um, dark brown KO syrup so come in here of course it's a little little chilly outside it's one of our colder uh, fall uh, days this year obviously that's because I'm doing something with uh, stuff that works better when it's a little warmer more like room temperature and so there we go just like that now our butter that i mentioned a second ago that is at room temperature because we want to uh mix that thoroughly with everything else all right come on get in there there it is okay that's good enough i'm not gonna worry about it so put this up now we're gonna take a little bit of salt they call it a dash i call it a pinch that works just fine no problem now we have We've got three eggs right there, but right here, we've got a cup of um, pecan halves. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to chop those until, let's see, let's make sure this thing's going to work. Is it? Let's see. Yes, it does. So we just want to get those chopped and, and uh, not like a powder, but just, just to have a little bit of consistency in our pie. Just, hey, there we are. And we're done. <laughs> so that's our, right there, we've got, that is our uh, cup of chopped pecans. Just like so. Away, we'll take our blade out of our little processor. And we're going to add those in. Just like that. There we go. Stay out of the way. Okay. Now, we're going to put our paddle. This is a, my, my paddle's got a little, uh, silicone edge on it so it kind of gets right up to the side of the mixing bowl and gets all the little goodies off the side now i'm going to come in rotate this up like so okay and i'm going to get that all kind of sort of mixed together and all creamed together that uh that that would be our butter our kale syrup pecans and sugar now we've got three whole eggs and i'm going to add one at a time just like so until they're all incorporated. Like that. <laughs> Again, what's amazing is we really are almost done. This is such a simple, simple recipe. My grandma, I got this from my grandma. I mean, we always had these at Christmas and, uh, and Thanksgiving. So let's get this all combined together. All right, that is coming together Perfectly. Yes, sir. That is perfect. So now let's move our little egg glass out of the way right here. See these? These are our whole pecans that we're going to put on top here in a second for a little bit of decoration. Now, there we are. We've got our pie shell. We're going to come in, get this thing off. Well, I guess it would help to lower it there. It's amazing how that works. <laughs> there we go. So now we're gonna take this, move it out the way. Now we're just gonna come in and we're gonna pour our pecan pie filling into our pie shell, just like so. Get all that good in there, heck yeah. There we are, get the sides down, just like that. Oh yeah, yep, 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 okay, there we are, all right. Now it's time for us to do a little decorating. Hopefully this is going to work out. I've got 40 uh, pecan halves in this little uh, container, a little ramekin. That should be enough to do the little design I do. Uh, the last couple I've done, it's been about 32 to 34. So we'll see if, if, if we run out. We've got, we've, got, we've got more over there. I'm not worried about that. So what I like to do is come in. Um, I, there's no rhyme or reason from, for, <laughs> for what I'm doing, but I'm just going to come in and I'm going to line, create a line of pecans right across, just like so, just like that. Again, there's, there's no, there's no reason why I'm doing it this way. You could, you could do a, a circle all the way around if you want, 
that's all up to you. So just like this. Okay. Boom. Fun, fun, fun. Gives you a little bit of creativity if you want to do something just a little different. And then I'll come in here and do a line of them right through here. Let's see. I need a little small one. There we go. Got it. Yes. Yep. Now, again, here we go. Just like that. Okay. Now, let's see here. We'll get this one. Go here. I know this must be riveting and awesome to watch. <laughs> but we're almost there. We're almost done. Then we'll get it into an oven. So, here we go. Yes, we will definitely have enough. So we're almost finished with the little decoration that I do. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to put one pecan in that little area that's kind of uh, asking for a little bit of uh, pecan love. So there we go. Just like that. Get here. Let's see. That one, that, that'll be fine. So there. That's perfect. That's, um, I was getting ready to eat those, but I don't know how that would sound. <laughs> But there we go. That is uh, our raw pecan pie. Now, we're going to put this in uh, oven at 350 degrees. We've got to preheat that. So that's probably the first thing you need to do uh, is to get that oven preheated. We're going to put it in there for about 45 minutes or so. And then turn the oven off. And then let that thing sit for about another 15 to 20 minutes. Oh, yeah. Let's go. Hey, while our pie is baking, we need to come up with a topping. So I think what we're going to do is a nutmeg infused whipped cream. How's that sound? Not bad. I take, I like it. So here we go. <laughs> we're going to take about a cup of heavy whipping cream. And right here we've got about a, um, a uh, teaspoon of freshly grated nutmeg it actually is a little nut <laughs> how about that and then we've got two tablespoons of confectioners confectioners um sugar and then now if you if you, if you want to work out that's fine you can get your hand whisk and you can whisk this thing up and five minutes or so you'll have whipping cream i'm going to do it the uh this way the 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 non-manual labor <laughs> way and i've got a, uh, a a whisk attachment on my hand mixer and what we're going to we're gonna, just going to mix it mix it mix it we're going to incorporate a lot of air and it's going to get some nice stiff peaks so here we go make some noise <laughs> all right you can see how it's starting to get a little thicker so right now you know what i'm going to do i am actually going to take a little bit of a taste to make sure we don't need to add anything else to it so here we go oh man that's perfect i like it when the plan comes together so we can go ahead and finish this thing up just like so here we go add an air add an air oh yeah check that out see there it didn't take too long and my arm's not tired from whisking so there we are that is almost perfect hold on I'm going to get the, just like that, I want to get that off the, uh, the, the whisk attachment. But I tell you what, we are ready to plate. Yes, we are. Check this out. Here she is. Now, what, what we did is after it um, came out of the oven, I brought it out on the counter and let it rest. Let it kind of sort of cool down because if we brought it out, cut it. Put it on a plate, the whole thing would just, all the filling would just fall out. Now, it still tastes good. You have like, you'd almost want to put that into, um, into a bowl with some ice cream on top and then some, pretty good idea. Anyway, that's not what we're going to do. So, tell you what, we're going to grab our plate. Um, that's, I just grabbed some um, little hot fudge. Um, uh, it came in a bottle and kind of squirted it on there. And you got to heat that up so it squirts out. Anyway, so here we go. We are going to cut us a piece of pecan pie just like so oh yeah so nice piece is what we're gonna cut okay yes make sure it's all the way through it 
for some reason, I wish they made a special, eh, they may, a special little um, spatula to get that first piece of pie out of, out of your pie, because it always seems to be a pretty tough thing to do. So, let's see what we got. Can we get it out without any true issues? Let's see. We're going to work it. We're going to work it. Ah, yes. Let's see. Just like that. Heck yeah, man. That thing looks awesome. Definitely looks awesome. So, what are we going to do now to finish this thing up? Get some of our whipped cream. Not going to do anything fancy. You know, we could stick in a piping bag and make little little peaks and stuff like that. I'm just going to come in here with a little dollop. Well, that's almost too much. No, you can never have too much. Just like so. Oh yeah, perfect. Now I'm going to grab a little bit of my nutmeg. Give it a little bit of dusting with that. There it is. Oh Lord. And I promise you, putting this thing together was not a hard thing to do. You saw, I mean, it was boom, boom, boom. Now, it does take a little bit of time to actually um, cook it, and then you got to let it rest, but here it is. Check her out, man. Oh, goodness, that is going to pair so well with your holiday meals. So, I tell you what, I hope y'all enjoyed our Thanksgiving special. I really do. It was fun. I enjoyed putting it together for you, for y'all. And um, hey, let me know how it turns out. You can go to our website, gourmetfishing.com. Uh, you can leave some uh, comments there. You can hit me up with the email through the website if you want. But also on the website, we've got all of our recipes and our links over to our YouTube channel where you can watch uh, everything uh, that we've put together uh, for y'all. Uh, we've got fishing, we've got cooking, we've got uh, boating, everything there for you to use. But I tell you what, I really do hope y'all enjoyed this show. Um, again, I enjoyed it. Uh, I hope everybody has a great Thanksgiving. And um, I tell you what, until next time, God bless and well, we'll see you soon. Well, it's that time of the year. It's Thanksgiving. I hope all of y'all um, have a great and happy Thanksgiving with your family and your friends. Hey, be safe out there. 2020 is bizarre enough. We don't need anything else to go go along with this crazy year, do we? So, I tell you what, again, y'all have a happy, happy Thanksgiving. And, hey, we'll see you soon. And three. All right. <clears throat> Everything good, I think. Okay, yes. Oh, yeah, check that out. Them a couple of times I'd I'd say hey you know, gotta be careful that uh, that grill right here well, I tell you what when we were doing our surfing turf <laughs> it got me anyway okay all right so um all right rock and roll rock and roll mm -hmm.